good sense of five operations. And these five operations are intersection, union, complement, relative complement, and symmetric differences. Because these set operations can be applied in real world situations. If you are interested in this topic, then this content is for you. So, what are you waiting for? Let's learn set operations together. Good day everyone, I am Mary Misha Andales and I am going to tackle about intersection in set operation. What is intersection in set operations? The set of elements that two or more sets have in common. When dealing with this set of theory, there are a number of operations to make new sets out of old ones. One of the most common set operations is called the intersection. Simply stated that the intersection of two sets A and B is the set of all elements that both A and B have in common. We will look at details concerning the intersection set theory. As we will see the K word here is the word AND or the symbol like this. How to find the intersection of the set? Now, let's say if we have set A which contains the elements 5, 7, 8, 9, and 11, and we also have set B which contains the elements 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So, what is the intersection of set A and B? How can we get the answers? To find the intersection, we need to find out which elements are common to both sets. So, both sets contain a 5, 8, 9, and 11. Therefore, the intersection of the set A and B is 5, 8, 9, and 11. So, that's how you can find the intersection of the sets. Let's have another example. Set C contains the vowel letters while set B contains the letter in the word another. As you can observe, the two sets have common elements which are the A, O, and B. So the intersection of the set C and B is A, O, and E. Take note that every set of an element is unique. No duplicate. For example, a set of letters from the word without. This cannot be considered as a set because this set has duplicate element which is the letter T. And a set is a collection that cannot contain duplicate elements. So the second type of set operation is called union. Union is the set of operations that belong to either one of the two sets. So in this set operation, you are going to combine the elements of the given sets. So A union B is equal to X such that X is the union between the elements of set A and the elements of set B. To understand more about union, here is an example. Suppose that set A is equal to A, B, and E, and set B is equal to A, C, B, and E. Then A union B is equal to A, B, C, D, and E. So to find A union B, you're just going to copy and combine the elements of set A and set B. Take note that you are going to write only one of the elements that is present in both sets, like letter A. There is an element A in set A and also in set B. But you will only write one 
element A. The same is applied to the letter E, since it exists in both set A and set B. This is done to make every element distinct from each other. So in presenting it in Venn diagram, since union is the combination of two sets, you are going to shade both set A and set B. So again, union is the set of elements that belongs to either one of the given sets. Here's how to find the number of elements in A, union B. Consider two sets A and B, such that the union of A and B can be calculated as follows. N A union B is equal to N A plus N B minus N A intersection B. N A union B is equal to the number of elements in A union B, or the cardinality of set A union B. N A is equal to the cardinality of set A or the total number of elements that belongs in set A. And B is the cardinality of set B, or the total number of elements that is in set B. And A intersection B is the cardinality of set A intersection B, or the number of elements that are common in set A and also in set B. So take for example this one. A union B is equal to A, B, C, D, and E. And A U union B is equal to N A, which is 3, add N B, which is 4, minus N A intersection B, which is 2, since there are two elements that is common in both A and B, and that is A and B. Simplify all of that, and that is equal to 5. A, union B, A, B, C, and E. That is 5 elements. So that is what union is all about. Good day everyone, I'm Stephanie Christine Baron, and I'm tasked to discuss the third set operation, the complement of a set. The complement of a set is defined as the set that includes all the elements of the universal set that are not in the given set. Notice that the word are not is highlighted in this part. In a Venn diagram, this is how the complement of a set is represented. Venn diagram below, that A has its complement A prime, where A prime is not part of set A, and set A not part of A prime, but both A prime and set A are subsets of the universal set. Now, let us directly dive into our first sample problem. Number one, let the universal set be the set of all even numbers at root 15. We have here the universal set that contains all the even numbers of the of the universal set that contains, that contains the elements 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14. And let us set set A containing the elements from the universal set, which are 4, 10, and 14. Now, what is the complement of set A? In this case, we subtract the universal set minus set A from A. The complement of set A or A1. Now we have a prime equals to the elements in the universal set, which are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, minus the, the elements in set A, which are 4, 10, and 14. For forming the operation, we have A prime that, is, that contains the elements 2, 6, 8, and 12. Now, this is our final answer. In this discussion, we will be discussing the complement of a set in detail. And in detail, I mean we will be discussing along with the complement of a set's properties, solve examples, and practice problems. Now, a complement of a set's properties. 
how these are the properties of the complement of a set. Complement of a set is four properties, and that includes number one, complement law. Number two, the law of double complementation. And then number three, law of empty set and unitary set. And lastly, we have the D. Morgan's law. Now, first, we tackle the complement law. The complement law has two statements. The first statement states that if A is a subset of the universal set, then A prime is also a subset of the universal set. Thus, the union of A and A prime is the universal set. It is represented as A union A prime equals U for the universal set. The second statement states that the intersection of set A and A prime results in an empty set or the symbol. It is represented as A intersection A prime is equal to an empty set or a null set. Here, an example of the first statement. Now we take the same example that we used earlier. We have the universal set that contains the numbers, these numbers up to 15, and set A contains the elements 4, 10, and 14. Now, we already obtained A prime earlier. A prime contains the elements 2, 6, 8, and 12. So that's all we need to do is prove that A union A prime is equal to the universal set. Now we have here the elements in set A and the elements in A prime combined, which results in these, which results in these elements. Now we have A union A prime is equal to 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14, which are the same elements that we have in the universal set. Thus, it is true that A union A prime is the universal set. The first statement is proved. Next, the intersection of set A and A prime results in an empty set. The same example. Now, all we need to do is compare the elements of A prime and the elements from set A. We call that the intersection means that common elements in two sets. Now, are there any common elements in set A and A prime? We see that there is none. There are no common elements in A and A prime. Thus, A intersection A prime is an empty set. And then again, we have proved that statement number two is true. Moving, moving on to the next property. given set. Now what elements in the universal set that are not in the given set? A prime. The elements that are not in the universal set in A prime. We have 4, 10, and 14. And these elements are just the elements that we have in set A. And the complement of A prime is just the set. Thus, this statement for the law of double complementation is again true. Moving on to the third property. This property, this property, this property, the law of empty set and universal set. This property is very easy and self explainable. 
the rest of the property is tight. The component of the universal side is an empty set of null sets, and the component of the empty set is the universal set. Now we have here the universal set containing even numbers up to 15, and that's A, A is on 4, 10, and 14. Example We have here new prime. What elements in the universal set that are not? In the given set, we can tell all the elements are present in the, in the universal set. That's why the, the complement of the universal set is a null set. And the complement of an empty set are all the elements in the universal set. That is how simple the third property is. Now moving on to the last this property is the trickiest among the four properties. We have here the last property, the De Morgan's Law. De Morgan's Law has two statements. First statement states that the complement of the union of two sets is equal to the complement of sets and their intersection. And this is also referred to as the De Morgan's Law of Union. Now we have the second statement. It says, that the complement of the intersection of two sets is equal to the complement of sets and their union. This law is also called as T Morgan's law of intersection. In the first statement, it is represented that the complement of A in B is equal to A prime, intersection B prime. The second statement is represented as the complement of A intersection B that is equal to A prime. Union three B. Now we focus on the first statement first. Given the same example, but here we now have set B, it contains the elements 2, 6, and 12. We prove the first statement. We combine the elements in A and B, and that yields the elements 2, 4, 6, 10, 12, and 14. Now, in this given set, the complement of A union B. What elements in the universal set are not included in A union B? That element is the number A. Hence, the complement of A union B is the element A, 8. And then, we get the complement of A, which is A prime, which, which was already given earlier with the elements 2, 6, 8, and 12. B prime elements 4, 8, 10, and 14. Now the intersection of A prime, B prime, what elements are common in A prime and B prime? The elements common in A prime and B, and B prime is the element A. We see that A, the complement of A union B and A prime intersection B is indeed equal. That's the first statement in Morgan's Law. More at the Morgan's Law of Union is true. Moving on to we have the second statement. Now we do the same with this statement just like what we did in the first statement. We identify the elements in A and B and then we identify the common elements in A and B to find its intersection. Now, do we see any elements common in A and B? We see not. Therefore, the, un the intersection of A and B is an empty set. The complement of A intersection B. We recall that the, the, the complement of an null set is all the elements in the universal set. Thus, the complement of A intersection B is the universal set. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14. Now we combine these sets A prime union A prime union B prime. Combined together, we have the set of elements 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 14, which is, the just, which is just the elements in the universal set. Now we see that. A, the complement of A intersection B and A prime meaning B prime yields the same elements. Hence, 
Hence, true that the complement of A under section B is equal to A prime union B prime. Now we have proved the second statement in the De Morgan's law, which is the De Morgan's law of intersection. Now, I want you guys to try this at home. That is it about the complement of the set. I hope you guys learned something. And let's move on to the fourth set operation. Hello everyone, I am Carl Junis Marie Bidyang, and I will be discussing the fourth type of set operation, which is the difference or relative complement. The set operation difference between sets implies subtracting the elements from a set, which is similar to the concept of the difference between numbers. If there are two sets A and B, then the difference of two sets A and B is equal to the set which consists of elements present in A but not in B. In simpler terms, the difference between sets A and set B is defined as the list of all the elements that are in set A but are not present in set B. So, let A and B be sets. The difference of A and B, denoted by A minus B, is the set containing the elements of A that are not in B. The difference of A and B is also called the complement of B with respect to A. So this is the formula. A minus B, or the difference of set A and set B, is equal to the set of all elements X such that x is an element of set A, but x is not an element of set B, is equal to the intersection of set A with the complement of set B. As we can see here, this is the shaded part, because this is the element of A that are not in set B. The set notation used to represent the difference between the two sets A and B is A minus B or A backslash B. I mean backslash B. A minus B in set builder notation is defined as follows. A minus B is equal to the, the set of all elements X such that x is an element of set A but x is not an element of set B. A minus B is equal to the set that is obtained by removing the elements of A intersects B from A. B minus A is the set that is obtained by removing the elements of A intersects B from B. To understand this set operation of set difference better, let us consider an example. Set A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Set B, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 9. If A minus B, then the answer is 1 and 2. It is because the elements 1 and 2 are not found in set B. While 3, 4, and 5 are in set A that are found in set B, so we will not include this. While if B minus A, the answer will be 6, 7, and 9. Why? Because set B minus set A. 3, 4, and 5 are both in set B and set A. While 6, 7, and 9 are not found in set A, so... The answer is 6, 7, and 9. Another example, if A is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and B is 6, 7, then the difference of set A and set B is given by A minus B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It is because 6 and 7 is found in set B, so we will not going to write these numbers or elements. We can also say that the difference of set A and B is equal to the intersection of set A with the complement of set B. So 
so this is also the formula or the expression. We will also provide an example with Venn diagram. So, set C, A, B, C, D, E, and set D, A, E, F, G. C minus D, C minus D is B, C, D because A and E is found exactly. So, we will not going to include this. While D minus C, D minus C is F and G only because A and E is found in set C. So that ends the topic for the fourth type of set operations, difference or relative complement. Now that we are done with union, intersection, complement, and relative complement, we are about to discuss the last set operation, which is the symmetric difference. So first, let us find out what is a symmetric difference. A symmetric difference is a new set containing all the elements present in either of the sets but not in their intersection. So, symmetric difference means that it is the union of elements in either of the sets but excluding the elements that they have in common. Symmetric difference is also called disjunctive union and mathematically it can be represented by using this. Symmetric difference of set A and B is a set that contains the union of elements in both sets A and B minus the intersection between them. So we have here a Venn diagram representing a symmetric difference. As you can see, we have set A and set B. So by its definition, symmetric difference is the set of elements that are in either of the sets but not in your intersection. So we have here the shaded region and the non-shaded region. The non-shaded region is the intersection of the two sets. So the elements that will be in the shaded region are the one that would be included in writing the symmetric difference between of the two sets. The elements that would be in the non-shaded region would be excluded in writing the symmetric difference. Let's have an example. So for example, we have set A. Set A contains numbers 3, 4, 5, and 6. And set B contains the number 5, 6, 7, and 8. The first thing that you're going to do to, to get the symmetric difference of these two sets is to see if they have common elements. As you can see, numbers 5 and 6 exist in both sets. Therefore, 5 and 6 is the intersection between the two sets. Now, the symmetric difference of sets A and B consists all the elements of A and B excluding the number they have in common, which is numbers 5 and 6. Therefore, the symmetric difference of A consists of numbers 3, 4, 7, and 8. So let's try putting it in a Venn diagram. So again, we have here set A that contains numbers 3, 4, 5, and 6, and set B contains 5, 6, 7, and 8. Where we already know that 5 and 6 exist in both sets, so we, we put 5 and 6 at the intersection of the sets. So we have 3, 4, 5, 6 for set A, and set B we have 5, 6, 7, and 8. The symmetric difference of sets A and B consists all the elements of A and B excluding the number they have in common. So the number they have in common is 5 and 6. So the symmetric difference of sets A and B are the numbers 3, 4, 7, and 8. Let's have another one. So how would you get the symmetric difference if there are three sets of elements, just like in this Venn diagram? So just the same thing, the non-shaded region of the Venn diagram would be excluded since it is the intersection between sets, and the shaded region are the elements that would be in the symmetric difference. For example, we have set A contains number 3, 4, 5, and 6, set B contains numbers 5, 6, 7, and 8, and set C contains number 1, 4, 5, and 8. 
the first thing that you're gonna do is to get first the symmetric difference of sets A and B. To get the symmetric difference, we have to see if they have common elements. So as we can see, 5 and 6 exist in both sets. Therefore, 5 and 6 are the intersection between the sets. So we have to exclude them in writing the symmetric difference. So the symmetric difference of sets A and B are the numbers 3, 4, 7, and 8. So we created a new set of elements. Next is to get the symmetric difference of the symmetric difference of A and B and the set C. First thing you do is to observe if they have common elements. We can see we have numbers 4 and 8 exist in both sets. So therefore, 4 and 8 are the intersection. So we have to exclude them. So the symmetric difference of sets A, B, and C are the numbers 1, 3, 5, and 7. So let's try to put to illustrate it using a Venn diagram. So we have here set A, B, and C. So the first thing that we do is to get the symmetric difference of A and B first. So the symmetric difference of two sets include all of the elements excluding their intersection. So since 5 and 6 is the intersection between the sets, so we have to exclude them. So the symmetric difference of A and B consists of numbers 3, 4, 7, and 8. So the second thing is to get the symmetric difference of this set and set C. As we can see, 4 and 8 exist in both sets. We have to exclude 4 and 8. So the symmetric difference will therefore contain everything except for numbers 4 and 8. So the symmetric difference of sets A, B, and C are the numbers 1, 3, 5, and 7. That's it. Thank you. Now, let's talk about the operation precedence rules. First, other things being equal, operations are performed left to right. Second, operations between parentheses are done first, starting with the innermost of nested parentheses. Third, all complementation are computed next. Fourth, all intersection are done next. Fifth, next to be performed are unions. Sixth, last to perform is the test of sets membership and computations equality or inequality. So we are done in the summary of the sets of operations. Let us now answer the try this. So we have the given universal set as the elements A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J. And set A as the elements B, E, G, and I. Set B has elements C, D, E, F, G. Set C as the elements A, C, D, E, H, and I. So, we will answer first number 1. So, the given A union B prime intersect C prime. So, first, we we'll have to write the given A union B prime intersect C prime so first we will have to write the set A and its elements so set A has letters B E G and I then we will look for the elements of the B prime so B prime so let's first look the set B and refer to the universal set and look for the elements that are not in the set B. So set B has C, D, E, F, G. So B prime has A, 
B H I and J Next We will continue our process So A union B prime So A union B prime We have to look for We will have to combine this this elements in the two sets so a b e g h i and j next we will have to look for the elements of c prime so c prime so C, set C has the elements A, C, D, E, H, and I. So we will refer to the universal set and get the elements that are not found in set C. So we will have B, F, G, and J. So therefore, so after this, we will go for the final answer so a union b prime intersect c prime will have the elements so in this we will find the common elements of the two sets so the common elements are b g and j so there are only three elements that are common B G and J so this is our final answer now the rest problems is yours to answer that would be all thank you